This week we're going to talk about how you get started with MetPy and Python if you're new to the ecosystem. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week I wanted to take a step back from some of the more complex topics that we generally talk about making maps with real data, or how to ingest and clean data, and talk about some of the basics for the incoming graduate student that's about to start, or for somebody that's new to the MetPy and Python ecosystem. Python really is a fantastic ecosystem, and I encourage most graduate students or just people that are curious about meteorology or that are serious researchers to use it for their data analysis. So, a few key points for if you're new to MetPy or new to Python in general. And the first is one that's very frustrating to a lot of new people, which is you can do almost anything, and you can do that almost anything in an almost infinite number of ways. And in fact, there will be a lot of opinions from different programmers on which way is the best or the right way. At the end of the day, if it accomplishes your goal, it's probably accomplishing everything you need it to do, and it's fine. Now, it may be able to be optimized or made more elegant, but as a researcher, your primary job is not a software engineer. It's a researcher. You do need to keep up with maintenance and updates. If you're used to something like MATLAB, well, that's installing the updates to the next version of MATLAB. In Python, things change a little more asynchronously and a lot more frequently, so you need to stay on top of that. Like in any programming language, you need to read documentation, look at examples, look at questions on Stack Overflow, talk to others that are using MetPy or Python in your department or in your school. Keep learning by doing your research projects or some kind of weekly code challenge, something to stay learning new things because it's very hard to know all of Python or all of MetPy. And finally, if you're really stumped, it's time to ask a question, and we'll dive into these a little bit more. I really think that installation is probably the biggest hurdle to most new Python or MetPy users. And really, the decisions start here. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you could install Python. You could use System Python. Uh, you can install Python, use virtual environments. You can use Conda. Uh, there's lots of ways to do it, but we recommend using Conda for your package and environment management. Also, we really recommend using environments, which are ways to sandbox your Python installations and packages. If you do get any error messages while you're installing, read them carefully before proceeding or trying to resolve a conflict. Instead of just clicking next, 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 you need to make sure you understand what's going on. Generally, the installation defaults are fine. And when it comes to installing packages, we recommend installing from the Condaforge channel as much as possible, as those are generally the most up-to-date packages. Now, that's a lot of things that you need to do or learn, and here are some of the relevant MetPy Mondays for you. Starting all the way back with MetPy Monday number one on how to install Conda. We also have a much later MetPy Monday that shows Windows setup of mini Conda and using Condaforge. We talk about environments and managing those environments. So this is a great small playlist to help you get started there. The next thing after you install is to just get the basics working. Don't immediately try to dive in to your dual radar synthesis problem, but make sure the installation works. Do this with known code. Try a simple hello world. Do it on the command line and do it in a Python notebook, which are a really great tool, and we've got videos on that. Also, maybe try to run an example from the example gallery. If you're gonna be using MetPy, look at the MetPy examples, download one and run it, or matplotlib, or numpy, or dask, or whatever library that you're going to be using, especially if it's one that you're not familiar with, try to run an example. We have a whole MetPy Monday on Python resources, which tells you some places you can go to get help or look up things. Also, just check out the docs and the example galleries for the packages that you're interested in. 
This next main point is one that I think a lot of early scientific programmers struggle with, and it comes from, I would say, the, the heritage of the Fortran days, where you do need to code your own numerical methods. But don't build from scratch. Python is a batteries included language, which means it's got a lot of pre-built functionality. We can add even more with these other libraries. So every problem is unique, but they really all have the same parts. And those problems, a lot of those problems have been solved. So you should focus on solving your unique part of the problem, but the rest of it, you should use other code. So generally, we have to read in some kind of data, we have to clean, sanitize, whatever you want to call it, uh, do some calculations on it, then we summarize that data in some statistical way, potentially, and make plots. So the key thing to do is look at the examples, documentation, stack overflow, what have you, and pick parts of that that do what you need, and use those. Don't reinvent them. But make sure you do always read and understand the code that you're using, because it could have some unintended consequences. And look for tested packages that have efficient and correct implementations of the things you need to do. MetPy is a great example of this. You can certainly calculate CAPE on your own. You can certainly write a transform function to plot skew t's on your own. But we've already done that, and it's been highly tested and has the most efficient implementation that we can do at the moment. So these are things that can save you massive amounts of time and generally not only reduce the complexity of your script, but increase the accuracy because they have been tested. And since it's all open source, you can of course go read it. If you want to know how CAPE works, you can go read the code for CAPE. So really, this is a set of Lego. You can build these different functions, classes, methods on top of each other to create your whole data pipeline. Some MetPy Mondays that demonstrate this are multi-panel animations. We talk a lot about de declarative plotting. That's worth taking a look at. It's a way to do plots in a very simple and concise syntax. And then we had a couple of videos called Putting It All Together, where we did exactly this. We took these Lego blocks and stacked them to make a more complex script. And then keep learning. This is something, you know, I've been writing Python since about 2009. I started playing with it a little before that, but seriously, since 2009. And I learned something new generally every day. So do tasks that you would normally do in Excel or in MATLAB in Python when you're getting started. If you need to fit a line, figure out how to do that in Python. If you need to take some sort of statistical measure of some data, figure out how to do that in Python. Do some simple weekly tasks, maybe following MetPy Mondays, along with your larger projects. The large projects, the research projects, are indeed your end goal, but having some small manageable tasks that you can take and complete are a good confidence booster. Again, make sure you keep things up to date and staying involved with the community is also very important. Uh, read the release announcements, follow messages on message boards or on Stack Overflow, read docs. And if you still have questions after you've done your homework, well, ask them because somebody else might have the same question. Now, that doesn't mean that you should ask, this is my master's thesis topic, how do I write a script to do it? Or ask a question without having researched in the docs and maybe even taken a stab at how to do it. But if you are really stuck after having used the resources that are available, there are generally a lot of people that are happy to help. There are some MetPy Mondays listed here, including one on contributing to MetPy, which is how you can take code that you've got and contribute it back to MetPy, or how to contribute bug fixes. And then, uh, for example, MetPy Monday 273, how to magically save storage space for maps, is a trick that after many years of producing large quantities of meteorological maps, uh, I learned and shared with everybody on how to reduce the file size. 
and get involved. That's just the main thing. Start doing things. Uh, it doesn't even have to be with the community, but install Python and spend an evening playing with it. Try to do some basic tasks. If you still need some inspiration, if you need a project, uh, well, first, go install it. Create an environment. Plot these data that I have listed and fit a line to it. Next, maybe read that data in from a file. Create a text file. Or if you want to do something meteorologically oriented, use Siphon to get real data and plot a SKUT. We have MetPy Mondays on how to do that, and there's a lot of hints in the documentation for Siphon and MetPy. So while this was quite a bit different than our usual MetPy Monday format, I just wanted to put this out there before everybody's getting started again in August with their classes and their research, that though it does seem overwhelming, learning Python and learning MetPy is something that's certainly doable. It's very rewarding, and I believe it can save you immense amounts of time as well as be a very marketable skill when you're looking for a job after school. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.